I really love this gospel reading. The Samaritan Woman at the Well. It's a story about forgiveness. It's a story about acceptance. It's a story about the true nature of Jesus Christ, all wrapped up into one narrative. Just perfect. So, please understand at the first, a little bit of background. <clears throat> the woman is a Samaritan, and Jesus is a Jew. Samaritans and Jews of that time did not get along. Okay? If you were a Jew, a Samaritan was a heretic and a half-breed. And today, there is no people, there is no demographic out there that we think of that negatively. The most I could think of in terms of a comparison is like having a brother that grew up with you around here. And then one day, he completely cuts ties with the whole family. And then he moves to Canada because he can't stand American politics. And then he converts to an entirely different religion. And then he marries the sister of your worst enemy and takes his side on everything. And he doesn't like the Packers. <laughs> you know, it's like, like there's, there's nothing left to talk about, right? You know, Mom, Dad, why doesn't Uncle Doug visit us anymore? Honey, Uncle Doug doesn't really see eye to eye with us anymore. It's the only thing I can think of that even remotely comes to the conflict between these two people. By the time Jesus came around, Samaritans and Jews were just so different in so many vital ways, they just stayed away from one another. And Jesus, not really caring about all of that, just strikes up a conversation with this Samaritan woman. So that's the acceptance piece. Jesus knows who she is. Jesus knows what she is, and he doesn't care because he knows that she is a child of God the same as anybody else. And part of the reason that story is so long is because the Samaritan woman didn't really get it because no Jew had talked to her like that before. It was such a bizarre encounter for her, she didn't know how to react. And that brings us to the forgiveness part of the story. Now, Jesus accepts her for the person she truly is. No problem there. But this woman is guilty of stuff. And the love of Jesus does not change that. She has to deal with whatever is off in her life. And it's implied in the story that she does exactly that with the help of Jesus. Now, I, I read the short version today, so we didn't hear about how she was married seven times. I'm not going to talk to you about getting married seven times. We don't have the time for that. But I do want to tell you about a term that applies to this reading, and it's a term you should all know, appreciate, believe in, and support. And that term is restorative justice. Restorative justice is doing what you can to rehabilitate a criminal or a wrongdoer and, and kind of bring them back into society. You know, let them be a loving and loved member of society and, and community. Um, the reason that's important is that some people think of crime as a violation against the law, and that's it. So it's between you and this abstract concept. But really, and with restorative justice, you have to understand this, crime is ultimately a betrayal against one's community. Like it or not, whenever you do wrong, you are hurting someone else somehow, and you need to repair that damage as, as best as you can. Now, hey, I get it. Maybe it's only partially. Some damage cannot be easily repaired. Sometimes when you say something, it's said, it's done, there ain't no taking it back, I understand, that's life. But you still have to try. You still have to do what you can. And that largely summarizes Jesus and this Samaritan woman. He restores her to a level of wholeness that she had lost by sinning and by refusing 
to comprehend the consequences of her sin. So I recommend that you think about restorative justice whenever you go to confession, whenever you do wrong, or whenever you deal with a criminal or someone that has somehow broken the law. Sin and crime hurt relationships, and therefore they hurt communities. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you can repair the damage and restore that loving relationship of community that all of us automatically deserve. It's a little like receiving Eucharist on the tongue. It's an inalienable human right that we all share.